Awesome, awesome, thank you very much. Learners, have a look at what Becky has loaded. I sent this through for you. This is for a, just a boost, so have a look. It says, study, baby, study, because only studying is going to change your life, okay? And we have been working now for sure, the whole year, but since about September, we've been doing revision, and we've gone through just about everything that I can think of and that you can think of that is important for this exam that you are writing tomorrow. I have also people, please go and have a look at the Mindset TV Facebook page. I've uploaded a couple of photos of um, things that you need to learn. And what I did was I just wrote little summaries, they're little brief, one little half page things, which will give you information that you must learn. Just as your last revision before you go to sleep tonight. Just go through those sheets and, and I'll put a couple more things on that I think about today in our session. I'll load them up after our show as well when I get home tonight. So please go to the, the Mindset TV Facebook page and have a look. Also on the Tenfold Education app, you can live stream as Mbali said, so but the pictures of, of, of the photos of the summaries that I've put up are on the Facebook page, all right. So here we go. The first, I haven't got the names of the learners that sent these questions in, but here we, I'm going to go through this as a reflex action. So if you look here, first thing, rule number one is we are going to write in the labels. So if we look at the label here, this is coming from here. And if you look, this here has a, is unipolar. So if it's unipolar, it is therefore a sensory neuron. Okay, so A is a sensory neuron. Now, that impulse is, because here in the skin, we are going to have receptors. And the receptors convert the stimulus, and it takes that stimulus and it converts it to an impulse. Because impulses are the only things that can travel along neurons. Not a stimulus, an impulse. So that's what the receptors do. They'll take a stimulus, convert it to an impulse, and then it will travel along the sensory neuron, and it goes biddy, 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 and then here we have a synapse. Okay, and the impulse transfers from the sensory neuron to this neuron here, which is a connector neuron. which would be E, and it then we have another synapse, and it then goes along the motor neuron, which is B, and it travels to the um, <laughs> effector, <laughs> effector, and the effector can be a gland or a muscle. In this case, this muscle this is a muscle, will contract and it will remove the hand from the stimulus which may harm it. Now, the path that this impulse travels, so from the receptor to the sensory neuron, through a synapse to the connector neuron, through a synapse to a motor neuron and then to the effector, that is called the reflex Oh man, reflex path. So the path is um, the root of the impulse. All right? When it, the, the response that you are going to get because of a stimulus like this will be a reflex action. And what is the function of a reflex action? It is so that it's a quick, automatic response to prevent the body from being damaged, okay? So it's to protect the body and remove whatever limb from something that is going to hurt it. But now your eyes are also, your eyes also have a reflex. So in your iris, that is, it's, it's a response that happens automatically when, for example, you walk into from a dark to the light, the pupils will constrict. Or if you walk and go to the dark, the pupils will dilate. That is also a reflex action as a result of a reflex path. Okay, now let's have a look at our labels. So we've got E, 
D, this here is, is this area, which you can't really see in the diagram, but this is called gray matter. Okay, and then this center part here is the central canal. And remember, when we look at the spinal cord, the gray matter is here, but this area here is the white matter. So the gray matter is on the inside, the white matter is on the outside. And in the brain, it's the other way around. The gray matter is on the cortex, and the medulla is made up of the white matter. And think about it this way. Look here. How many cell bodies do we see here? There's a cell body and there's a cell body. It's these cell bodies here that make this the gray matter. And the fibers of the neuron, so the axons, this area here, is in the white matter. So the fibers make up the white matter and the cell bodies make up the gray matter. Alrighty, now, it says give labels for each of the following. Okay, region D, well we've already said that's gray matter and neuron E, would have been the connector neuron. You can also call the connector neuron an interneuron. Now remember, inter means between. Connector means to connect. So both those terms are easy to remember. Right, then it says, write down the letter of the part. So don't name it. If they say letter, then you must write down the letter only. Transmits impulses to the central nervous system. So what is going to transmit the impulses to the central nervous system? Have a look here. If you look at all of these, it's going to be your sensory neuron. Remember, sensory neurons carry impulses from the receptor to the spinal cord to the brain. And the spinal cord and the brain make up your central nervous system. All your um, sensory organs, so your skin, um, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your ears, all of those are part of your peripheral nervous system. Central nervous system, spine, and the brain. Okay? So, will transmit impulses to central nervous system will be A. Contain cerebral spinal fluid. Well, hello. Where are we going to find the cerebral spinal fluid? It's going to be here in the central canal. So, it is C. Then explain the effect of the reflex action if part B is damaged. Now, look here. If part B, the motor neuron, was damaged, it means that the brain and the spinal cord would still receive the, uh, the, the impulse from the stimulus, whatever the stimulus was, but there would be no response. Okay, because remember, it's like a highway. So, look at this. If I have... Um, Okay, so here's my one highway, and then I've got the barrier here. You've all traveled on highways, and there's the other one. Now, this highway travels to, I don't know, let's say from Johannesburg to Pretoria. Okay, and this one travels from Pretoria to Johannesburg. Okay, so they're traveling in opposite directions. This one goes in this direction, this one goes in this direction. Now, if, for example, a car has to go from Johannesburg to Pretoria, that's fine, and it gets to Pretoria. Now that messenger or whatever has got to go back to Johannesburg, and this road is blocked. That car cannot get here back to Joburg because there is no, there's a, there's a I don't know, a, 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 the road has just got a big hole in it. It can't get past. It's not going to get there, which means in this case, if we look at our diagram, it means that this impulse from this central nervous system, in other words, the spinal cord, me, uh, spinal cord, is not going to be able to get to the muscle to cause this muscle to respond, which means there will be no response. So no physical response. Um, let's just write it properly. So we're going to find... For 2.1.3, you're going to have the sensation will be perceived or felt, okay? But, and this is what's important, there will be 
no response. So let's say, for example, I take my hand and I put it on a hot plate. My brain's going to pick up that, there's a, that, that, that my fingers are burning, but it's going to take a while for me to now respond to remove my hand. It's not going to be automatic like a reflex action normally is. Okay, then um, the nerve pathway in the above response is, okay, this is just a calculation. So really, I mean, that this is pretty easy. You're going to have um, 1.5 minus, um, no, uh, at least, sorry, divided by 75 meters per second, and that's going to give you whatever it is. So literally do that calculation. It's easy peasy. All right, let's have a look at our next question. Oh, something else I want to tell you here. Let's just move this down. Let's just go back here. Is this, yeah, the synapse. Now, a synapse is the connection between the one neuron and the next neuron. So it's going to be between the end plate of the one neuron to the dendrite of the next neuron. Now, remember, your sensory neuron is either going to be unipolar, okay, so one pole, or, or bipolar. Those are your sensory neurons. Your motor neurons oh, and by the way, please make sure you know the labels, okay? You must be able to draw a sensory neuron and a motor neuron. They're quick and easy. If you know the one, the other one's just got a little bit more. Okay, so with a motor neuron, you are always going to have a multipolar neuron. This is unipolar. This is bipolar because it's got two. So bipolar. So those are sensory neurons and your multipolar is going to look like this. Sort of looks like a bit like a little flower. Like that. And each one of these is going to be a dendrite. So it's got lots of, of, of poles, you see. Okay, now... If we look at a multipolar neuron, your sensory neurons transmit impulses from your receptor to the central nervous system. Your multipolar neuron transmits impulses from the central nervous system to the effector, so a muscle or a gland. But now in between, we have our connector neurons. And the connector or interneurons, these guys here, they are also multipolar Okay, so just remember that. Now, in just this simple little connection that we've done here, there are going to be two synapses. Now, why is a synapse so important? The significance, because they'll say to you, what is the significance of a synapse? People, please learn this. In fact, you don't even have to learn it. If you listen now, you'll know it. So, what is the significance of the synapse? Or they can say to you, why is it important? So the importance of a synapse. Why? What is the significance? What is its importance? There are the, the, the three. But the, the two easiest ones to remember is that the impulse only travels in one direction. Okay, so that's what a synapse does. So if you've got the, the terminal end plate of the one neuron and you've got the um, your multipolar neuron of the next one, it makes sure that this impulse travels in that direction. Always. It will never be able to go back because there's this gap here. That's called the synaptic gap. And that's what the synapse does, is it makes sure that the, that the neurons don't touch. Because if they did touch, what would happen is the impulse is going to go this way, that way, this way, that way, this way, that way, and we'd all sit doing this. All right, so it doesn't. It, it, the, the synapse makes sure that the impulse only travels in one direction. That's important. Number two, it is able to speed up or slow down 
the impulse. So if an impulse has got to move fast or the impulse has got to move slowly, that's what the synapse does. It's able to control the speed at which that impulse travels. And then our last and, and, and also another really, they normally ask for two, but just in case you forget one, here's a third one, and this is that um, the synapse can block an impulse. Okay, that's very important. It can block an impulse. And sometimes when we take medication, that medication uh, um, releases neurotrans or, or prevents neurotransmitters from working to carry the impulse across that synapse, that synaptic gap. Okay. Hmm. All right, so that's that question. Mm -hmm.